Alrighty, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show Serving Nerve, where we talk about whatever we want, and uh, yeah, I moved, great, I moved, we did it, alright, I uh, did it all in one day, uh, finally got settled, fantabulistical, but, uh, you know, there have been a few issues, and uh, it's just been taking a while for me to get back in the swing of things, I had to rebuild my desk, set up my tech, blah blah blah, you all get the dealio bop when it comes to moving, sometimes things take a little longer than expected, but we are back on track, a little bit, somewhat. Uh, I haven't slept, so pardon if I'm tired. Sleepy pops mode activate, I must full-heartedly admit. And I'm also dealing with a bit of a workplace harassment issue, uh, from what I can perceive. So that's suboptimal. Uh, ironically, not on my own end, because I'm usually the one who I would expect to be the most fucked up and annoying, but apparently there's somebody worse than me. Now that's an obvious joke, because I'm not here to incriminate myself on the things that I've done throughout my disgusting miserable life. But in spite of my current pessimistic view and the somewhat depressed background that we do need to decorate because it looks absolutely disgusting, uh, truly uh, a little bit too whitewashed if you, uh, if you can't tell, um, we're going to be talking today about faulty children's toys. Now, today we're going to be talking particularly about the Miniverse toys. Now, Miniverse, if you don't know anything about it, are like miniature collectible toys that you can oftentimes build yourself. Uh, usually you will buy like mini brands, you can buy like mini toilet paper, mini bounty, mini uh, hot dogs, mini Burger King, you know, mini things, miniatures. They're made with all kinds of concepts, there are some really cool ones, it's kind of a vibe, and I love miniatures. I don't know anything about if you know anything about me loving miniatures, but I am a hella big fan of creating my own miniatures. And when I see somebody making miniature food items and miniature brands and miniature items that are so dainty and tiny, it's diabolically adorable, I'm particularly inclined to want to indulge myself in such a purchase in spite of being in my mid-twenties almost. Um, but outside of that, um, as a small child, I personally would love to be able to get my hands on this stuff. And for me, like the little play foods, uh, those were always a vibe. Barbie was kind of fun. Little's Pet Shops were so, so fun. Little's Pet Shops were my favorite. Only first gen, though. After that, it starts going downhill. But I don't mean to go on about toys and toys and toys galore all day long, because that's just going to end with me not stopping with the talking. Today, we're going to be talking about the UV resin that is in some of the Miniverse products, and if that is safe for children's age three or up, or age four and up, because these are not built or promoted for ages under three years old, zero to three years old old, but they are promoted to ages above that. And on the products, you don't usually see, uh, you know, the things you should maybe be seeing regarding what is contained inside of the products. Uh, warnings on some of the contents of the things contained in the products, particularly the UV curable resin that you find in these packs. Now, you can actually pour and compose the resin into various dishes, various things and whatnot, and then cure it with a UV light that is provided. But the question is, is this stuff actually safe for at-home usage? And the answer is, probably not. Now I have to say probably not on the basis of this being a company that uh, obviously is promoting and providing children's toys. So there is a level of regulation that does come with these kinds of toys but I do not see a significant sum of people talking about this, and it's kind of potentially a problem. UV resin is not the safest thing to be handling as a child with your bare hands and no gear or, you know, you know, facial mask, no gloves, no nothing, and a lot of that is not actually explained in the kits. Uh, it's kind of in there a little bit, so I mean, on a legal basis, you know, it is what it is. But on a safety basis and an access basis and a promotion basis, nah, nah, it ain't a vibe. Now, I'm going to explain this and go through a little bit of this. We're going to explain a little bit about UV resin and what the potential safety concerns are with UV resin and what is provided in these toys, how much resin is too much, is it safe, is it not safe, what is the actual situation here, because I've seen a little bit of people talking about this, just a dainty doddle, but I've also not really seen a lot of people talking about this, in spite of me now coming into contact with tons of content uh, with people playing with this UV resin for the Miniverse toys. Particularly, I ran into, because I love MasterChef, the Miniverse MasterChef series, which I also bought a bunch of the toys from, 
and wanted to play my hand at because I love the idea of making a bunch of miniatures. It would be kind of a vibe, kind of fun, and also just kind of like cool spark for creativity, you know? But generally speaking, when I started playing with all this stuff, I was like, hmm, this resin that I have in my hands isn't giving me a lot of warnings or a lot of disclaimers that I shouldn't be handling with my bare hands and I shouldn't also be handling this in a contained space with UV resin fumes. Now, if you look at UV resin, some of the concerns that can come from exposure to UV resin that is uncured, I have to warn, uncured, which you do get in the packaging, you do not get cured resin, the plastic and some of the resin that is in the toys and in the miniatures is cured already. Some of it is not. Some of it is there for you to cure so you can stick things to it, you can kind of create your own dishes, do kind of cool things, you know, it's clear so it can look like a sauce, a liquid, you know, you can also have it mixed down with other colors and other components so that it's not clear. It looks like maybe frosting or something on a cake. And the total composition can create a really cool and new, you know, toy for every single individual in spite of it being the same components. It's cool. It's a unique play on playtime. It's a unique concept and it's fun. Trust me, it's fun. Playing with resin in general is pretty entertaining. Trying to create your own stuff has always been fun from the easy bake oven to this thing to whatever people were into. And a lot of these things nowadays for various purposes are recalled. Now, when it comes to this, this company that does provide the Miniverse toys has a few recalls but not exponentially to what I would expect given the product safety concerns. Now, the only thing about these outside of a choking hazard, which we're not gonna talk about because a choking hazard is kind of dumb. Uh, I mean, most toys have a choking hazard. If you are a parent, uh, you should definitely calculate for your kids putting stuff in their mouths. A lot of toys, no matter what they come with, have usually small chokeable parts from Legos to Barbie to whatever. You're gonna find something to choke on if you're a dumb kid. I never quite understood that myself, but you're going to find something to choke on if you're a dumb kid. So outside of that, um, we're going to talk about the resin. So I found a couple of videos online and I found a couple of articles and or, uh, you know, kind of disclaimers, little things online that we need to go through to kind of understand my perspective on what I'm seeing pertaining to this topic and the somewhat ignorant view that might be coming with this and might be putting your kids, more importantly, just the safety of your kids at risk. Now, I'm not trying to create a problem where there isn't one, but this might actually be something parents want to know about because I don't know if they know this. Like, I don't know if the average parent is going to know the safety concerns that can come with you touching uncured resin as a four-year-old child. I don't know if a lot of parents would think that when they just go to a store like a Target and they buy one of these things off the shelf and they're like, oh, cool, it's a make your own, you know, your own miniature kid's toy. Yeah, my kid won't choke on it. They'll get the resin all over their face and their hands. And, you know, that stuff's hard to wash off because uh, you usually need a lot of soap, isopropyl alcohol solutions are the best usually to get rid of uncured resin from like skin and stuff. But your skin's pretty porous. It's really hard to get resin off of your hands. And it is potentially a bit of a concern if you've got a kid that's gonna get their hands covered in this resin, then touch their face, touch other things in the household, and get resin fumes all over the place, and also get the actual content, the sticky resin, all over the house and on themselves. Particularly the important thing here is human contact without any protection with resin. Now when you look at these kits, they don't come with gloves, they don't come with a lot of warnings like wear a mask or, you know, have airflow in your room when you're doing this uh, or wear gloves when you're doing this. It doesn't show a lot of that. It mainly shows this is how you do it, this is how you cure the resin, and this is what you're kind of playing with. Now, we're gonna go through some of this and I'm gonna kind of explain the situation that I think might be unfolding if people really get into the miniverse stuff. It has been blowing up online. Particularly, I ran into it even with the MasterChef series of the stuff because I love MasterChef. So I even started running into it and I think it's a very common kids toy for a lot of people to be into collecting. So I'm gonna go through it and we're gonna break it down. Okay, so this might not look the best screen wise, but this is the first video that I found on this matter when I was playing with these and going like, does anybody actually like know that resin probably shouldn't be handled by human hands? And when I was looking at the MGA, the brand MGA, uh, Miniverse Make It series, 
uh, this video popped up, and it's just of a chick talking. The video quality is not great, um, but the principle still stands. So I'm just going to kind of like play it off and then kind of point out a few concerns here. Hello everyone, it's me Starlight Studios, and today I am going to be talking about MGA's Make It Mini Mini vs. Foods, because I really love them, but there's a problem that I haven't seen anyone talk about, and it's actually a pretty big danger. So these m mini craft kits are great. They're a great way of making miniature foods for your dolls, your toys, etc. But there is a major problem with them, and it's one of their good points too. So these kits are extremely worth their price, and they include resin. Resin is a ex an extremely toxic material. These kits do not include gloves. That's my biggest thing. They don't include gloves, and I don't feel like they put in adequate warnings as to this is UV resin. So, yeah, the sauce on these, that's UV resin. you got to be extremely careful with resin. If you know anything about it, you'll, you'll see where I'm going with this. Resin is highly toxic, highly irritationable, and it is, you know, a, it's a poison. It's a toxin. And these kits do not include gloves. They do not include proper PPE. For this, I'd say proper PPE would be gloves and potentially a mask of some sort, just because resin has fumes. Now, this particular resin is actually pretty decent quality and isn't very fumey, but I would still say, since not everyone's gonna be doing this in a ventilated area, use a mask if you're in an enclosed space. Outside of the mask thing, you do still want to, even if the fumes are low, with small children, the fumes might still be an even bigger issue. Like, if you give this to your kid, if you're an adult playing with this, uh, the risk of, like, a smaller level of fumes might not be as concerning, but as a developing child, they could be an even greater concern. You're a much smaller human being. I like how this person mentioned gloves. This is only one of the videos, and this one I actually haven't seen. There's another one that I saw of a mom talking in the video about the UV resin and how it reeks really bad. Now that one I'm going to need to pull up again because it is important. But this one, this individual talking is making a lot of sense here. A lot of UV resin, no matter what the quality of resin, you do need, when it's uncured, to have gloves. Usually a well-ventilated room, away from dogs and children, and also preferably a mask. A, like, basic medical mask is probably not going to help with that. You're going to need a higher quality mask to help keep those fumes from coming into your airways. I'm just pointing this out, my people. Now, if you're in a well-ventilated area, then you should be fine, but I was just doing it outside. And, you know, wear gloves when you're messing with resin. If it gets on your skin, it's highly, it causes a lot of irritation, and it is highly toxic. You don't want it on your skin. So... And I made the mistake, by the way, of not thinking about this. I've never really played my hand with resin outside of playing with these toys. And then I started looking into it. And I actually do have, like, eczema and, like, you know, an autoimmune condition that exacerbates, like, reactions to even things like citrus and stuff when it comes into contact with my skin. When I was actually, like, touching this resin, I noticed that it did start to burn a lot. And even when I washed it away, and I washed it with multiple things, I first washed my hands. Like, I wiped them dry. I got as much resin off as possible. Washed them off wash them with a ton of soap and when i found that there was still components of resin on my skin like you can feel it because it's sticky it's almost like a uh, castor oil like a really thick oil it's like a goo it's not going to come off easily i then decided to wash my hands off with like a 70 percent alcohol solution that we had because it was the only thing that could get the resin off of my skin and on top of that the only way I could get it off of any surfaces that I'd gotten it onto, like my workbench, was with alcohol. All right, so I, through the antics of getting this on my hands, have learned that resin is a little bit toxic and it hurts uh, my skin. Um, so I like really washed my hands uh, after coming into contact with it, but I also washed them off with like soap and isopropyl alcohol, and then I also oiled my hands. So hopefully this isn't too bad, and hopefully I don't die. So uh, let's just not do that again. With an isopropyl solution, so like a, an alcohol solution. That was the only thing that would get it off. So I'm just telling you guys, this is not something you want your kids to be like touching and playing with, and then getting all over the place, because it's not easy to remove from surfaces or human bodies. Along with this subject, how is MGA getting this towards kids? 
the marketing for this is around, you know, 6 to 10, 6 to 12. It's around that, but I've also seen that on the, the packaging, I just need to point out, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong that I maybe misread this, but when I was on the MasterChef series, the MasterChef series is zero to three is a no-go, and then anything above that, I don't know. But it's marketed for, like, kids, kids. Like, younglings. Not, like, teenagers, not adults. This stuff is marketed to, like, little ones who want to create their own stuff, you know? So it is pretty wild. It is pretty wild that it is that low on the scale of concern promoting it to these small kids. That's one thing that I find kind of odd about this. And it's not that surprising because there's been a lot of products that have come out for children that are, you know, pretty bad, <laughs> like pretty bad. And then they're later recalled. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I was a little kid, you know that like weird balloon stuff that like goo smelled so toxic, but it was delicious smelling too, that you'd put on a stick and you'd blow it up and it would make crazy weird balloons. That stuff's been recalled. And that's stuff we played with when we were little all the time. It was awesome, but it was also super toxic. I don't, I don't even remember what the situation with that was. I'm pretty sure it was the fumes that were a concern uh, and also the fact that it was like toxic if ingested. But this is actually almost even worse because with that stuff, at least it would kind of come off of your body. It was like a plastic. It wasn't like a UV resin and that stuff's gonna be harder to get off your kids. How is this being marketed towards kids? Kids are not respo- I work with kids a lot. They're not responsible enough to be dealing with resin. Resin is extremely toxic. And I feel like the outer packaging doesn't have adequate enough warnings for the parents. Because the parents are like, oh, you know, this is a cute toy. Grabs it to stop your screaming kid. They aren't gonna see like, oh shoot, this is toxic. I feel on the outer packaging there should be something more. Because a lot of parents are buying these for their kids. These sell out every time. I've been having a hard time finding them because they're selling out so much at my stores. So they're very popular. But if parents don't know there's resin included, then their kids could potentially get poisoned. I'm very curious how MG is doing this without proper, like, telling you this is a poisonous thing. Within the actual balls, you know, the, like, capsules... There is a bit of a warning, but I don't feel like it's adequate enough. And who's going to read that? You just throw away the papers. So that is the thing also. When I was pulling out the MasterChef stuff, all of... And I'll put the footage of, like, some of me breaking this down. Because at first I was going to do a cool video kind of breaking down the product um, and thinking it was really awesome. The little uh, instruction manual was put in a little, like, you know paper bag and that was sealed off with a bunch of other paper bags that had all, like the food and stuff in there and the resin and then it was put in a ball and then it was wrapped twice so it's pretty well contained but if you just decide hey i want all the stuff like all the stuff for the resin all the stuff for the foods and i'm gonna pull out the little like cooking manual but i'm not gonna look at the like you know the safety warning instructions the massive safety instructions that kind of come out of that little pouch that little box um i'm not gonna look at those you're gonna miss out on basically the entire warning altogether in the master chef series at least so i feel like there should be some sort of bigger warning on the bottom and i have to point this out i'm so sorry i keep interrupting i'm gonna move myself just to kind of point something out here this person is actually i don't believe using what's supposed to come in the uh the series this uh uv light that this person is using right here this is not what comes in the kits the kits have a uv light that is kind of weak i think i find it kind of weak uh, the light takes like 20 minutes to cure something usually like it can start curing things like pretty quick into it but to fully cure the uv resin it takes a while it takes quite an extensive quantity of time to cure that resin your kids are not going to be that patient they're going to be like i want this now i want to add more stuff to this i want to do other things i want to play with all this stuff and they're going to mess with it and then they're going to find oh uh oh like my hands are now covered in resin i've been playing with this toy i thought was cured but it's not. The resin's not cured. The resin does not cure very quickly, especially with the UV light you're given. I don't believe this is the UV light that is at all provided. This is somebody else's light. They're using a stronger power or at least a larger surface area light. The lights that you get are like this much. This much like of a surface area for light. It's not a lot. I'll show you in the video. There's actually a point where I take like a bunch of the little master chef lights and I, I line them all together just so I can hit the surface area of one singular item because it's ridiculous. It's actually like not a good setup 
Uh, and it's because the light also is only going to fit in this package. You're going to have like all these little things, but the light in there is not going to be adequate enough to hit every single angle of the surface area that has the resin on it usually. I just need to point that out. themselves, there's a warning like, do not eat, you know, do not inhale, but no one's going to pay attention to that really. So I feel like these should ha come with gloves. Like a pair of plastic gloves is not that hard to include. Like you don't, I use full latex gloves because that's what works with my skin best. But I feel like something should have been included, as well as like, hey, this is dangerous. I also feel like, I don't know, it's an extremely dangerous thing to have as a kid's toy. And as much as I love it, I worry about potential consequences of it. However, you know, if you enjoy these like I do, I'd say invest in a UV lamp as well. It's going to cure the resin a lot better and a lot faster, and more securely. But yeah, that's about all I have to say on these. I really like them, but be careful. It's resin. You really need to be safe with resin. It's a toxic material. Um, I hope y'all, you know, understand what I'm saying. And I'm sorry to rant on about something that may not seem important. Bye. So I really appreciate this person. I actually did not check out their video, but this is Starlight Studios. MGA's Miniverse Make It Mini Foods Are Dangerous. Uh, that is like the video, that's the content. Uh, comments are off, that sucks, but, but maybe it's because it's like a made for kids video or something and that's off. But anyways, point being made, they make the appropriate warnings. Other people have no idea what the warnings are for. Other people literally have like jack of a clue. So I'm gonna go through this and kind of point out my other concern. So this is actually the original video that I ran into and I found it on TikTok when I was researching this entire situation. Uh, this is by a woman called, I, I don't know her name, I'll find it in a minute, just give me one second, Arena. But she actually, like, didn't even know when she bought the toy the potential risks of the resin. She had no idea, and when she got into this action, she was unpleasantly surprised. Uh, so we're just going to kind of go through her video and see what she thinks because I'm not gonna go through all the videos that I found, but I'm gonna go through a few. We're gonna kind of, you know, break it down, make the point that we need to make, and uh, you know, kind of, kind of explain the situation here. That some people I don't know if I don't know if people are getting it. I don't know if this is like, I don't know if this is like a thing that's just gone over everybody's heads, or if this is like, you know, gonna be like blown up soon, and people are gonna be like, yeah, I'm not gonna get that toy. But I'm just pointing out my people. Even parents are buying it for their kids. And uh, they're starting to notice. So it's getting a little wild. It's getting a little crazy. I just got pointed out. This lovely lady here is going to give her perspective. Oh my God, you guys, this is actually really funny. So I got this toy um, for my husband and my son's stocking stuffer. I have two boys. And because we love like mini food, we also love all the videos by, I think her name's Isabella Rose. Um, she does like the little froggy crochet videos that like they're drinking tea and making strawberry pie. Anyways. Long story short, love like all the mini food. And so I got this at Target um, and I got like a few of them because I thought my boys would like it. And it says, you know, like, look, it's like make it, min make mini food. Like it's very cute, right? All these mini foods, okay? I know that this is plastic. I did not think, it's not edible. We know that. My sons are three and a half and six and a half. So they know not to eat this stuff. So again, like she's like, I thought it was plastic. I thought it was plastic. Plastic choking hazard, not a massive toxic hazard. Yeah, you can argue for BPA, but on the basis of being ingestible, again, and I gotta point out, again, she found it at Target. She found it at freaking Target, my dudes. It's completely accessible. It's not like some obscure thing you're gonna find online. These are readily available in stores today. You know, um, little did I know how bad it actually was. You guys have to check this out. Okay, so I got a few of them. Uh, I opened one and it was this one, which is like the hazelnut crepes. Okay, so, you know, it comes with all the little pieces, right? So here's the plate. I made them. And this is the hazelnut spread. Okay, so I opened this and immediately it didn't look like a hazelnut spread. Now, I didn't think they actually put Nutella in there. Um, and I was surprised there was anything that you could actually open, right? But I, I it was easy to open. I opened it. And um, I thought... That's another thing I have to point out. The ceiling for these is literally like, you got this little jar, it's made of plastic. Once you pop that thing off, it's basically like kind of a weak cap. It's not like child safety locked or anything like that. There's no child safety twist. 
Uh, and then there's a little bit of a, you know, a little metal foil covering like you would have on like a peanut butter jar or something like, you know, just a little seal like you'd have on paint or anything like that. Uh, and then once you peel that off, the resin is fully exposed to air. It's fully exposed to air and to you. And then if you try to put that cap back on, it does not seal it well. You can take the cap and you can like kind of just knock it off after a point. A lot of the time when I was playing with this stuff, the cap, like if you take it off, it's not gonna be, you know, that secure coming back on there. I just have to point that out as well. The entire composition of this product is minute components that are not meant for long-term storage either. I thought it was just gonna be like pretend fake spread and then it started smelling really bad, like disgusting, okay? It smells, oh. Even right now, like I just breathe that in, like just talking and this being here, like I, I could smell that. So it smells like- That's also a concern, by the way. The resin might not be fully cured. I could be wrong. The smell is supposed to usually go mostly away once you cure it because it's solidified. You also want to have it in like open air again, but the resin takes a long time to cure. It does not take a small amount of time to cure. And she still has the jar, the jar that is kind of not really that secure, that is exposed to air. So I'm just pointing out my people like the, also the disposal methods. I don't even know what the disposal of this is supposed to be. Like imagine throwing this away and then it being exposed to like water, the environment, uh, whatever the case is, can't be safe for humanity or the world as a whole. Don't think it's supposed to be just like thrown away. Pretty sure it has to be like properly disposed of in like, you know, a more recyclable method. Like you have to be careful with throwing this away as well. So I'm not sure what that situation is, but we'll have to look into that later because I'm also curious on the disposal methods for UV resin. Like skunk, like a skunk mixed with like rubber glue. Like it's really bad, okay? And I was like, what the fuck is this, right? Threw it away. Then I realized, I was like, holy shit, I need to look into what that is. So I went into the garbage bag where it was just to see, just to get like the safety hazard warnings. And it completely consumed the entire garbage bag, even though it's very small and tiny, very sticky, got it all over my hands. I, now it does say like contents are not food. I knew that opening it. I did not know that it would be this fucking disgusting though. Um, you know, but it's teaching you to prepare it. And then it says like, caution, resin under UV exposure. What? The chemical properties of liquid photopolymers make them poison if, in if ingested and is also a potential skin irritant and allergen. Furthermore, uncured resin is classified as a hazardous to aquatic life. Yeah, so like this- And also to human life. I mean, like getting this on your skin is actually a potential risk. At best, it's an irritant. At worst, it's like a toxin. Your skin's an organ. It can absorb some of the, you know, components that might irritate the skin for whatever thing. I'm not trying to be like a medical doctor. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. I don't know Jack, but you know, I played my hand with a few poisons and I gotta tell you, this is definitely poisonous. This stuff is definitely toxic. Disposal methods for this again, don't think you should be just throwing this away. Don't think you should be exposing this to water, uh, which is funny because to wash it off, you know, just to wash it off, like I don't know about trace amounts getting into water, but technically you're washing this down into the sink and that's going back into our drinking water. So I don't know. I'm, I mean, I might just be making things up at this point because I don't know the entire method of how America works uh, in terms of uh, water and, and stuff and things. But I'm just saying my people, uh, this is kind of a concern. It's kind of a concern. This is really toxic. It smells horrible. I got it all over my hands. And apparently I am not the first person to discover how toxic this is and ask, why is this in a toy for children? And why is it sold in the toy section at Target if this is a toxic substance? There's lots of Reddit threads like this. So what is this toxic smelling product for kids? Basically exact same thing as me. They bought the same product because they thought it was gonna be cute mini food. First response, it's a resin kit. Says it right there in the title and description. You can yeah, it doesn't say that there's resin anywhere on this. Nowhere. Um, in very, very, very tiny print down here, it says, <laughs> I actually can't find it right now. Oh, it says includes one bottle of resin. It says it there. It's extremely tiny and you can't read it. Um, it says that it's eight plus, but everything says it's either three plus or eight plus, And that usually just has to do with small parts, choking hazard or difficulty assembling. Usually. So I'm pointing this out um, just on the basis of warning signals or warning signs and stuff. 
Uh, I know that we can argue like, well, product safety, they, they're disclaiming it. They're not disclaiming it. They're disclaiming it or they're not. Uh, I don't care. I, I don't care if they're disclaiming it or not. This is being promoted to kids. Uh, this is not something kids should play with, whether it's a disclaimed product or not. If it says it has resin that's toxic or not. If it doesn't say anything or it does. Uh, parents just need to know, don't give it to your kid. Don't give it to your kid. This is for like collectors. This is like collector item stuff for adults that know how to operate with the equipment needed and also the environment needed and also the potential safety risks you might encounter when you're playing with resin. This is not for kids. It doesn't matter if it's warned about or not. Obviously on a safety concern and on a, you know, safety rating and stuff, we're gonna go into that too. But just to point out, I know people are gonna argue it says it, it doesn't say it, this doesn't say it, this says it, this product does and this product doesn't. I literally don't care. I don't care what the product manufacturer says on the packaging or not. Obviously it's better if they disclaim it, but the thing I have to point out, no matter if they disclaim it or not, is this is being promoted to ages three plus or eight plus. That is not an age where kids should be playing with these contents. Doesn't matter about the warnings. We can warn all day. This is something they shouldn't play with. Doesn't have to do with it being toxic resin. The main thing I'll say is that this shouldn't be in a toy. And a lot of people say that you need to include gloves because this stuff is really bad. It's extremely sticky. It was really hard to get off. Um, yeah, like they should at least include gloves. This is, this should not be a toy. What the fuck? Well said. Well said, madam. Now we're gonna go through a few of these comments. One is also they had scientists test, uh, tested and made it non-toxic. So that's interesting. So this is the thing I wanna go into uh, on the basis of non-toxic, uh, on the basis of toxicity, what makes it toxic. Uh, and then so, and this is the thing. Um, I, I gotta tell you, you can argue non-toxicity, but this is not a swallowable product still. It's still disclaimed as a non-swallowable product. And also, like, I had an allergic reaction to it. Other people probably have had allergic reactions to it. Uh, gotta point this out, kids still are getting this sticky substance all over their hands and face that's hard to wash off, it's not ingestible, and they're exposing their bodies to it. We can argue about the toxicity in a moment. So we're gonna go through all of this, because even on the website, MGA, it's got some interesting information on there that we need to go through. Somebody else says, I bought one and was also very surprised it had UV resin. And yes, gloves are necessary, right? There were tongs, so there's little plastic tongs, but those don't really do a ton, by the way. I have to point out the little tongs. Eh, I, I gotta tell you, my people, I was playing with some of those tong items. They're, they're cool and they can help, but when you're undoing the cap for the stuff, you're using your hands. When you accidentally get a little resin on your hands, readjusting other little squirting components, you're gonna probably inevitably get some on your hands. You should use gloves. It doesn't say don't handle without gloves, that is true. Uh, from what I have seen, I have not seen any warnings on my packaging, and I wish I kept the packaging. For some reason, I threw everything away during my move, but I still have all of the like actual components and the little balls that it came in. Uh, it smelled like plastic. I have a tip, don't throw away the set, just the resin, and get Elmer's school glue or any other non-toxic and get some paint and mix it in a Ziploc. That's a cool piece of advice, but the disposal method, you know, questionable. I don't know if we should just be throwing this stuff away. I don't know if that's safe. Uh, and then also, like, that doesn't really, like, solve the problem here. We're still buying stuff from a company that might be giving us products that could be potentially risky for children. I'm not trying to make false claims about the company, okay? I'm just trying to point out some people might not be aware that some of these products could have potential safety risks. You have to use a UV flashlight. It won't be toxic once set. That is true. I'm pretty sure she used it though. Like it's pretty well explained in the instructions that you use the UV light. The thing that isn't well explained is the potential safety concerns and the toxicity potential of this resin. So yeah, they're just complaining about the smell, the potential risks, better options for parents. Etc. It's good information. I can appreciate people in the comments actually being like, hey, now this person at the very tip top, you know? So this person at the very tip top is saying also they had scientists test it and, you know, made it non-toxic. Well, let's look into that because, you know, it's a little bit curious. Maybe, maybe it is. Let's go on to the website itself. Let's go on to MGA. All right. So 
you go on to MGA, their website MGA. Then you take a little dealio dop over to the Miniverse. So MGA owns a bunch of other toys. They own a bunch of brands. Uh, it is not just Miniverse. They own like all kinds of toys, all kinds of brands. But today we're gonna be checking out Miniverse. You click on this, you go, ah, introducing MGA's Miniverse. Get your hands on the mini versions of your favorite MGA toys and products. Go to the website, where to buy, let's go to the website. Um, so we go onto the website and we see this cute, colorful website that is pretty, you know, pretty out there looking for, uh, for entertainment, uh, for kids' toys. Uh, and then we go with just released bestsellers, make it mini food, make it mini lifestyle. Now, the bestsellers uh, you're going to have on this bestsellers list, a lot of the make it series stuff. The MGA Miniverse Make It Mini Lifestyle Series Mini Collections. The Miniverse Make It Mini Food Holiday Series 1. The Make It Mini Food Diner Series Minis. What do all of these things contain? I've looked. They contain the resin. Let's go on to this one, this popular item. This is the Christmas Make It Kit, okay? It's the Make It Mini Food Holiday Series Mini Collection 1 whatever dealio. 8 plus, uh, it's got a number, uh, 20 points, score, uh, but anyways, uh, what does it say, my people? What does it say right here on their description? Deck the halls with Miniverse. All new creative DIY holiday themed make it mini foods to make and collect. Miniverse is the original mini collectible that you can prep, set, and display. Build your mini creation and enjoy all the oh-so-real details. Each ball comes with realistic mini holiday-themed ingredients and accessories to make your own mini replicas of your favorite winter snacks. Pardon how I'm butchering the reading, but I've never been one to read aloud. Um, I'm pretty bad at reading in general, to be honest. Uh, but anyways, each package is a surprise, so you won't know which mini you have until you unbox it. Compare the contents of your package with the included collector's guide to see which mini you have. Follow the recipe card on the back to prep your mini. Once you've finished creating your mini creation, set your replica in any UV light until the resin has hardened. So it does say, hey, there's resin in this. Once it's set, you've got a holiday collectible ready for display. The fun doesn't stop there. Your finished replica is not the only item worth collecting. From mini replica versions of candy canes to mini gumdrops to a mini basting brush, uh, whatever that is, uh, there are so many unique ingredients, packages, and kitchen accessories to collect and create your very own mini collectibles. Collect all the Make It Mini... Jesus, this is like honestly a tongue twister. Sorry. Collect all the Make It Mini food mini collectibles. <laughs> collect all the Make It Mini food mini collectibles. If it's not MGA's Miniverse, then it's not MGA's Miniverse. Disclaimer... Uh, yeah, uh, disclaimer, ingredients are not edible. That's the disclaimer. Uh, and then it says not suitable for kids under eight years of age. So, you know, again, like, and then you go to other products and it's like the same kind of warning you're going to be seeing, uh, you know, disclaimer, ingredients are not edible. Okay. Uh, disclaimer, uh, let's do another one. Disclaimer, ingredients are not edible. The ingredients also include the resin. The resin is not edible, but that's not the question we have. Is it even safe to touch? Is it safe to breathe the fumes? What is the safety risk of this resin? What is the concern here? And also, is this safe for kids? I don't believe so. Personally, I don't think so. Your kid's gonna be touching this, then they're gonna touch their face. This stuff's hard to get off of human skin. Personally, I would say, uh, on the basis of even like accidental consumption, the risk is kinda high. Now we're gonna go to their product safety. Now their product safety is interesting. Um, product safety is from MGA. It's not exclusively Miniverse. Now you'll notice this. I got links to the product safety because MGA is the only one that has the product safety listing. So this product safety stuff uh, that I've got here, it's all MGA. MGA has a bunch of toys and stuff. It's not just the Miniverse stuff. I know that we're exclusively looking at the Miniverse, but MGA actually has a bunch of toys. 
So they're safety tested as well. To make these toys available in the United States of America, they're supposed to be safety tested. So when we go through this, it's not just saying the resin in the toys, it's saying every single toy with MGA and one of those brands is Miniverse inside of MGA. So MGA owns Miniverse and Miniverse has these toys that contain resin. So the question I have is, are those also being safety tested? And also, what's the basis of concern for this safety testing? Because I don't think this makes a lot of sense to me, but maybe I'm insane. So let's just go through this. This is MGA's safety tested thing. And what I would hope to find is actually a link proving their safety testing. MGA's entertainment number one commitment is to the safety of your children. MGA Entertainment Inc., the makers of your favorite brands like LOL Surprise, Little Tykes, yada, 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 all these brands, understands you want your children's toys to be safe. That is why our toys and products are subjected to a rigorous testing process that not only meets, but quite often exceeds legal requirements. Legal requirements. I just want us to consider here, like on the basis of safety testing, they just don't want to get sued here. So what you're going to see is these conform to legal requirements, federal requirements, etc. But are these actually safe for your kids to be messing with, even if they're approved by the government? That's my biggest question also. I'm not trying to say that they're breaking the law. I'm just saying like, what is the level of concern? And also, can we find the information for this UV fluid, this UV, um, not UV fluid, but this UV resin? Can we find that information on the basis of the safety of this resin? That's something we have questions about. We did not just institute these policies recently. We have employed them since the very beginning of our company, okay? Uh, we ensure our toys are safe. Like most toy companies, MGA Entertainment manufactures many of its products in the Far East. I have no idea where the Far East is. I'm gonna assume it's China, but I failed geography, so I have no idea. In order to produce safe products abroad, we take extra precaution by testing not just our finished product, but our raw materials as well. What exactly do we test? We test to all federally mandated and toy industry associated voluntary standards for presence of lead, normal use, and foreseeable abuse, including torque tension drop, compression strength, accessibility of magnets, and a host of other standards. All of our product testing ensures that MGA Entertainment toys and products you purchase meet the highest standards of quality and safety in the industry. MGA Entertainment products are safety tested by independent accredited laboratories throughout the manufacturing cycle, manufacturing life cycle. By the time you purchase an MGA Entertainment toy, it has been tested beyond industry standards and federal requirements. They always have and they always will. Cool. Um, what does this mean? What does this mean for this UV resin? That is our question. The Toy Industry Association. Let's click that. Let's try and figure out if they can actually explain to us if they even test for UV resin. Uh, global commerce, protecting workers, all that stuff. US safety standards is probably where we're gonna be finding this information. I seem not to be able to click it. Okay, there we go. That took some work. That took like a solid cookie clicker level of work there. But anyways, so this is standard electric toys. Uh, there's a bunch of toys, but I wonder if we have a search bar uh, because God, do I have to actually look through all of this? I thought I wasn't gonna be making a documentary. All right, so I tried looking for it and I'm not gonna lie, I gave up. So I decided let's just pinpoint what the type of resin they're using is in the Miniverse toys and find what the potential safety risks of that resin is, and then just try and gauge on a general basis how risky this resin is for basic usage. Uh, that's the only thing I can think to do. I'm also gonna be going back to the MGA site after I just look into what kind of resin this is to try and find the actual information on if they actually just say, hey, our resin here is either non-toxic or it's safe or it's not safe and yeah, whatever. And then what I'm gonna do is also, I'm probably gonna just contact the toy company directly uh, and you know, whatever. That's what I'm gonna do. And uh, we're gonna see where this goes. Photopolymer came up when I was like, what is UV resin? I just looked it up on Google. And I know it's Wikipedia, but you know, it's whatever. Anyways, it, we can argue Wikipedia, but we're just trying to find out what resin we're looking for here, what UV resin we're looking for here, all right? So do pardon, this was Wikipedia. I know I'm citing my sources and my sources are Wikipedia. 
A photopolymer or light activated resin is a polymer that changes its properties when exposed to light, often in the ultraviolet or visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. These changes are often manifested structurally. For example, hardening of the material occurs as a result of cross-linking when exposed to light. An example is shown below depicting a mixture of monomers, oligomers, god I haven't done organic chemistry since like high school, and photo initiators. Wow, Wikipedia did use confusion on my ass, my flat ass. Anyways, uh, sorry guys. Um, that conform into a hardened polymeric material through a process called curing. So basically, you take the liquid, expose it to light, these chemicals do their deal, you bop, they solidify. That's that's what I'm gauging from this, all right? So it's just, it's called science and stuff. The, the power of curing, the power of the cure. Oh, look at that, the AI found information for me. Uh, this is how I basically operate to try and find information. So please point out any logical errors you find. But basically all I did was then I looked up, are all photopolymers toxic? And according to AI, which the AI found this information for me, according to a 2021 NCBI article, polymer extracts from all tested photopolymers are highly toxic to both invertebrates and vertebrates. So we can hypothesize through the AI and the internet that at the very least, these photopolymers, this UV resin is in some capacity toxic to any living being. Uh, human or dog or whatever, it's toxic if ingested, if ingested, and it does say that on the site, if ingested. But what are the potential risks of compounds getting on your hands? What are the skin irritation complexities? This is actually like kind of beyond the scope because no matter how I try and deduce this, this UV resin can't be safe, like can't be non-toxic. It can't be like, there's no way it can be non-toxic. If it's a UV resin, there has to be some level of toxicity to it. So whatever that person was saying in the comments section, I don't know where they got that idea from. I don't know where they proved that from. I don't know where that was exposed from. I don't know where on the website it says it. I don't think it says it anywhere. Pretty sure that no matter what, no matter where I try to look, the UV resin in that kit is at the very least incredibly poisonous for human consumption and other animals to consume. Uh, now, the real question is though, are the fumes dangerous? Be getting it on your skin, is that a concern? Because that is also a question here. After it's cured, it's probably not toxic. I mean, obviously you don't want to eat it, but it's not like toxic to breathe. It isn't toxic to touch. It isn't toxic to cure the resin and then touch the resin when it's hard and then touch your mouth or lick your hands or whatever, wouldn't recommend it. But the thing is when it's uncured, when the contents can get on your skin, get in your mouth, that is where the concern lies. So this is um, Weevolver. Weevolver says, uh, and I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually like do a little bit more research than just go into articles. But I'm just trying to point, I'm just trying to find as much information on this as possible. The thing we're trying to find here is how toxic is this toy stuff, and what's the risk here, and should you be giving it to your kids? My answer still is gonna be no. But I'm just saying. So they're exposing zebrafish embryos and stuff like that. Uh, to 3D printed parts and monitored their rates of survival, hatching, whatever. Um, the chemical properties of, so this is the thing, it's like, what's the testing rate? But we do know it's dangerous for ingestion at the very least. The chemical properties of liquid photopolymers make them poisonous if ingested and also a potential skin irritant and allergen. Uh, furthermore, uncured resin is classified as hazardous to aquatic life. We already know that. Uncured resin can irritate bare skin and can cause a rash called contact dermatitis. Uh, this can ultimately become more severe and cause an allergic reaction after prolonged skin contact. So the more exposure, the more dangerous. Several ingredients in common 3D printing resins can cause skin irritation. Now, obviously this is a 3D printing website. It's not like the toy website. It's a completely different thing. But I'm just saying, I got this stuff on me. I got the UV resin from the Miniverse toys on me, and I started having an allergic reaction. So I would say it is similar. I would still argue that given its liquid form, it is still dangerous and a potential irritant for the skin. I did have a reaction, and that was like, with it being exposed to me for like, not that long, by the way. 
So I'm just pointing out, it's a possibility. Eye irritant totally is. I mean, like, if you got this hypothetically in your eye, this is going to be a concern too. Like, it actually would be concerning. Um, you don't want anything like this in your eye, whether it's non-toxic or not, or it's not non-toxic. But, like, whether it's not, like, an irritant or, like, a severe concern, you still don't want it in your eyeballs. Uh, you don't want anything in your balls. Um, several ingredients in consumer 3D printing resins um, including pre-polymers, photo initiators, I can't read, and uh, plasticizers can be harmful for human eyes. I'm gonna assume that it's either, I don't know if it's the fumes that they're saying or if it's like actually getting it in your eye. This is another thing is like, I don't know. Poisonous if ingested, we already know it's poisonous if ingested. Dangerous fumes, liquid 3D printing resins give off fumes. So again, like this is 3D printing resins, but I'm just pointing out my people, there are potential risks here. So. Uh, liquid 3D printing resins give off fumes or vapors containing volatile organic compounds, VOCs, that can be harmful to humans if inhaled into the throat or lungs. Short-term exposure to resin fumes can result in dizziness, headaches, and throat irritation. The long-term risks are unknown due to lack of research, but may include increased risk of cancer. Uh, and also, I just have to point out my people, uh, when I was playing with this stuff, the smell alone gave me a headache, so I can't actually verify if it was, like, the compound exposure or whatever, but I didn't wear anything. I was in my room, uh, barehanded, barefaced, uh, probably not my best idea, and, you know, if this is the thing that gives me cancer, I wouldn't, I, I literally would be surprised. I probably already have it. Uh, no, but bypassing my stupidity and my ridiculousness. Um, environmentally harmful, yes, it can be a, a potential risk for aquatic life whatever, um, they should be classified as toxic waste. Wow, I didn't know that. 3D printing resins are harmful to the environment and should be classified as toxic waste. This means they should never be poured down the drain or directly into bodies of water, but should instead be safely bottled up and disposed of through dedicated toxic waste channels. Photopolymer resins are a pollutant that can kill marine life and destroy ecosystems. Fully cured UV resin is less environmentally harmful than liquid resin and is therefore easier to dispose of. Alternatively, it is possible to use bio-based resins that are much less harmful to the environment, even in their liquid form. Let's look into bio-based next. Okay. So, I've been looking all over the website to try and find if there's any information, like, any information on, on the resin, the UV resin particularly on the website. I've gone onto the Miniverse website and just the MGA website, and I can't find anything. I directly contacted the Miniverse people to get back to me on an email, and all they said to me was a generic response email, I said, hello, I need to know, is your UV resin in the kit non-toxic? Should I be worried about fumes? I just listed off a couple of very basic questions. And the response that I got was, good morning, this product is recommended for eight plus years. Um, that is it. That's the only response that I got. Uh, MGA Entertainment Inc., the makers of your favorite brands, blah, 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 want your children to be safe. It gave me literally the same breakdown as the safety so this email that I got literally gave me the same information that's just right here. They just copy pasted it. Uh, they obviously, I don't know if they know, I know it's all automated stuff on this end, but the only thing I got from this was it just said, yeah, the product's for eight plus years, that's it. And that's the only answer that I got. Outside of that, they literally just copy pasted like this email for this, this entire page. And then outside of that, um, that that that's it my people that's all i got i mean like i've been i've been contacting them that's what i got from them uh, i don't really have any solutions uh like i'm not trying to be like conspiratorial i just feel like this is just what it is i mean like they're just i don't know if it's safe or not i wouldn't say it's safe for kids at all it's definitely poisonous at the very least for ingestion i don't know about the safety regarding like exposure by air or to skin i would say it's not safe based on my experience but that's just my personal opinion, and I'm an authority of nothing. I am just a mere pawn of circumstance. I'm pretty sure this stuff is unsafe. I, I wouldn't be able to find any information. 
regarding this, because I directly contacted Miniverse, and they gave me the same information that's on their website. So, I guess we'll just put this all online, and at least have you guys know, I don't think this is a safe product for children. 8 plus? Doesn't matter. I think this is barely a safe project for adults to be playing with, particularly if you aren't going to be using gloves, masks, you know, eye coverings or goggles or glasses for safety, and also having a well-ventilated room, and also getting a better UV light than the ones that they provide, maybe. Uh, that's just a little bit more petty, though. I would say this product is not safe at all. And, you know, I know that, like, it's just my opinion, and this is the opinion of a host of other individuals online, but when somebody actually asks, like, a genuine question regarding this, and the only response you get from the company consists of, like, it's for eight plus years, doesn't really answer my questions. And I don't know if they even know. It's definitely toxic if consumed. That's, that's already proven. It's already obvious. Any resin that is UV resin, any resin in general, it's, uh, I'm pretty sure all resins, but definitely the UV resin, that is all toxic. It is all toxic for ingestion. But on the basis of fumes, on the basis of, like, all these other things, I don't know. Uh, this being non-toxic, couldn't find any information on that. Don't think it would be. Uh, but I always am willing to kind of play my hand with that kind of variable, kind of like, you know, devil's advocate here. I can't really do that. Uh, this is a product that's marketed to kids. And, uh, you know, the last thing I'd want is to play devil's advocate for kids becoming exposed to potentially dangerous materials just because a toy is cool. Now, I get we have choking hazards, like all kinds of toys are choking hazards for kids, but this is not just a choking hazard. This is a potential, like, bio, like, agent, like a toxic waste considered agent. Like, to dispose of this, you can't just throw it away. You can't just, like, rinse it down the sink. You can't just do what you would think to do with it because it can contaminate water. You might be able to get away with breathing it in, but I wouldn't recommend it. People discourage pets from being near this stuff. Can't eat it. Uh, when it gets exposed to human skin, it can cause allergic reactions. So I would say, like, this stuff's not safe for kids. I wouldn't give it to an eight-year-old. I, I wouldn't give this to anybody, like, that isn't, like, a functional, considerate adult willing to risk their own well-being for a cool toy. That's my personal opinion. Um, tell me what you think in the comments below. And, uh, you know, I'd rather be crazy, or I'd rather be, uh, erring on the side of caution and paranoia than putting, like, kids at risk. Like, this is a cool concept. It's a cool toy. It is. It's a really cool toy. If I were a kid and I had access to this, I'd lose my mind. But saying that, it is super dangerous. That was the video. Tell me what you think in the comments below, but this miniverse thing is kind of wild. Uh, it's actually the first thing that I've, you know, wanted to come back with because I think it's just that crazy. And the fact that it's being sold in, like, you know, stores all across America, it's in the toy sections of your stores, uh, it's for kids, it's marketed to kids, 8 plus, and it's a product that is readily available and accessible, and it doesn't come with any safety equipment, it doesn't come with, like, gloves, goggles, whatever doesn't come with like any information that is like on the label that is really out there. There's not a lot of uh, appropriate information on this uh, in the marketing scheme. And uh, I would say it's probably not safe. And I also would say it's a bit wild. Like I don't really care about like safety regulations. If this is the kind of thing you can get away with putting out there, like what does this prove? If they hit all the marks and can market this stuff to kids, how safe is, like, the entire toy industry as a whole for children? Not particularly safe. Like, if this is something you can get away with, whether it falls into some kind of, like, legal loophole, whether they don't they don't think about resin or something, like UV resin, or all of these other, like, all of these other, like, associations, like the Toy Industry Association, whatever, uh, if they don't consider uh, that as a variable to test for, or that kids shouldn't be exposed to it, then I don't know how safe this, like, industry really is. And it kind of sucks, because I've always wanted to be a toy maker. Like, I've always wanted to build, like, things for kids, like toys, comic books, art, create, like, cool games. Like, create stuff for kids. Because when I was a kid, there were so many cool things I wish I had access to. One being, this kind of stuff. But if I were a dumb kid, like, kids are not, like, kids are pretty smart. But kids don't understand the potential ramifications uh, of, you know, like toxicity 
they don't understand, like, if I get this resin, this UV uncured resin, on my hands, and then I touch my face, and then I lick my face, or I rub my face, or I get it in my mouth, or I get something in my eye, or I get some on my hair, or I get some around the house, and then I touch that, I get some on the countertop, my mom puts some food down, and then my food's got resin on it, like, like, you can't calculate for this. You would have to have a completely, like, perfect environment to use this, and even then, is it safe? Is it actually safe for exposure? And I would say no, I don't think it's safe. So, generally speaking, I don't- I don't think this is the way to go. Um, I want to make this video because, again, like, I love games, I love toys, I love building this kind of stuff, and I love all this stuff, you know, it's cool, it's a really cool idea, it's a really cool composition. Like, if I had access to this, I would have lost my mind as a kid, but it seems super dangerous, uh, wouldn't recommend it, and I don't know, man. I don't know, this is interesting. So tell me what you think in the comments below. Uh, do you think this is safe for kids? Do you think it should be marketed for children? Do you think eight-year-olds plus should be playing with this? Anyways, that's the video. Tell me what you think in the comments below, my people, and I will see you next time. We will do a follow-up if I can find any more information on this, and do tell me if you know of anything to do with these circumstances or on any potentially non-toxic UV resins, but I don't think these resins are non-toxic, and I don't know how, like, you know, unhealthy they are for you to just be exposed to by air but tell me what you think in the comments below i am interested and uh yeah that's the video so i'll see you next time my dudes it's later